The Honourable Natalie Ward. <clears throat> Thank you, um, Mr. President. It's with great regret that I stand here again today to bring attention to a very disturbing issue, an issue that shows the worst of humanity. It has ruined lives and taken lives, and unfortunately it's shown its face in our country and across the world once again. Not for the first time, but I always pray it will be the last time the issue I'm talking about today is anti-Semitism. As we approach the Jewish high holiday period and the community unite across the world for prayers, food and celebration, or in the case of Yom Kippur, mourning, so do we enter a period of heightened anti-Semitism, not just in Australia, but everywhere. And so rather than comfortably attending their synagogue services or Jewish children going to school, the Jewish community is still haunted by hate. It's with great sadness that I observe that this is nothing new. Specifically this year, some disturbing acts of hate, although I'm sure there've been many more, are why I'm standing here talking about anti-Semitism. While I had speeches I could have given tonight, I'm not going to use my opportunity in this place to sit back and allow this to become routine. It's my moral obligation to bring everyone's attention to this, to call it out when it happens, and most of all, to do everything in my power to stop this dangerous culture of hatred from taking over our world again. And it is with profound grief that I elucidate these incidents. The first is here in our country, right next door to us in Melbourne. A 12-year-old boy, still in school, was allegedly lured to a park by a classmate with the promise of kick-to-kick -kick football. Visualise it. With a history of ongoing bullying and anti-Semitism towards him, he was hoping to play some footy with some classmates. Picture your son, your cousin, your friend. Picture yourself at 12 years old in that position. You walk to the park with that promise, with the expectation to play football. And at 12 years old, you get ambushed and surrounded by nine other 12 and 13 year olds. You are scared. No, you're terrified. Why? You're told that you must grovel at the feet of another child and kiss his shoes, either that or get beaten up. And that's exactly what happened. Then those same kids film and photograph the incident and post it on social media for the world to see. If that very thought doesn't make you sick, then knowing that you, this young man will be haunted by this for the rest of his life should. How often will he relive this horror? How his life has been changed? Since this story was released, the same boy has been receiving a series of threatening text messages, including death threats that he'd be slaughtered. Kids are not born with hate but clearly more needs to be done to teach acceptance at an early age. And yet another incident took place in Hawthorne. A five-year-old boy has been diagnosed with acute anxiety and is now homeschooled, following a vicious and ongoing campaign of abuse by classmates calling him a dirty Jew, Jewish vermin and a Jewish cockroach. A five-year-old. He was mocked so harshly in the school bathrooms for being circumcised to the point that he wet himself out of fear of going to the bathroom. A five-year-old. How is it that here in Australia, in Melbourne, we are reading in 2019 that five-year-olds are using sentiments that mirror the language used in the Holocaust? I commend the Treasurer, the Honourable Josh Frydenberg, for his call for Australians to be better educated about the Holocaust. Sadly, here in Sydney, we have also had recent incidents of anti-Semitic incidents in the schoolyard. However, I'd like to note that it's an example of how a school can deal with a terrible situation appropriately. A recent incident entailed students at a leading Sydney school posting on Twitter, burn the Jews and gas the Jews. The school then rightly contacted the New South Wales Jewish Board of Deputies who met with the students concerned and in the company of school authorities, after a candid and constructive meeting, the school suspended the students and had them do 30 hours of community service, 15 hours within the Jewish community and 15 hours in the wider community. The New, New South Wales Jewish Board of Deputies subsequently received a letter from the mother of one of the students thanking them for their handling of the issue. While anti-Semitism and hate will continue, we know that there are appropriate ways to deal with it, and I commend Mr Vic Aladef and the New, New South Wales Jewish Board of Deputies, but also the school and parents for proactively dealing with this horrible situation.